What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the ABCs of OSS, where we're breaking down the world of open source software one letter at a time. I'm Taylor, and today we're diving into E for end of life, or EOL if you want to sound fancy. Let's get real about EOL. It's that moment when maintainers basically say, we're done here, and stop providing updates, fixes, or support. If you've been following our series, you might remember how we talked about this with AngularJS back on episode one. Now, software hits EOL for different reasons. Sometimes there's just better tech out there. Sometimes maintainers run out of time or resources. But here's what trips people up. EOL doesn't mean the software suddenly stops working. Tons of companies keep running EOL software because, let's face it, migration is expensive and complicated. But running EOL software? That's playing with fire. Let me break down why this should keep you up at night. First up, security. When your software hits EOL, you're basically running unpatched code in production. New vulnerabilities will pop up, and guess what? Nobody's fixing them. Fun times. Then there's the compliance nightmare. If you're dealing with GDPR or PCI, and uh, who isn't these days, running EOL software is like asking for trouble. Your legal team's gonna love explaining that one to the auditors. And don't even get me started on compatibility issues. The tech world does not stand still. Browsers update, operating systems evolve, dependencies change. Your ELL software, it's frozen in time, just wanting to break in spectacular ways. So what do you do when you're staring down the barrel of an EOL announcement? First, don't panic, but also don't ignore it like that weird noise your car's making. Start checking out alternatives. What's out there that could replace your EOL software? What's the new hotness in that space? Then you need to make a solid migration plan. I'm talking full on project management here. Identifying dependencies, testing everything, and I mean everything, and making sure your team actually knows how to use the new solution because surprising your devs with new tech is always so fun, right? Sometimes though, you can't migrate right away. Maybe you're stuck because of budget or time or that one critical feature that literally nothing else has. In that case, you need to get creative with risk management. Isolate that EOL software, beef up your monitoring, maybe look into third-party security patches or support. It's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Here's the real talk though. EOL isn't just about dealing with old software. It's about being ready for change because in tech, everything hits EOL eventually. The question isn't if, it's when, and how much coffee you'll need to deal with it. That's our fifth letter in the ABCs of OSS. Next time we're talking F for forks. And no, not the kind you eat with. Until then, keep your code clean and your dependencies updated. Peace out.